Hi, I am Donna and myself and my family have a wombat sanctuary. We set up the sanctuary around about 12 years ago and basically we rescue wombats from any size, any situation and it is funded by myself and my family and um, donations. We don't receive any government funding for this work. And this is my story. People ask, why wombats? Why have you got the sanctuary? When I first came to Australia, I decided that wombats would be my teachers and not humans. And I was watching a wild wombat graze off the side of the road, well off the side of the road. I heard a car, it veered right off the road right into the wombat's back, broke its back. They then reversed, pissing themselves laughing as though they had just entertained themselves to the highest degree and drove off. I sat with that wombat for four hours. It took four hours for that animal to die <laughs> because of his broken back. And I promised that wombat that I would make a difference. And I will never forget the look in that wombat's eyes. And if ever I get tired or overwhelmed, the only thing I have to think about is the look in that wombat's eyes that night. And I cannot tell you the relief I felt when it did finally die because it was one of the four longest hours of my life watching an animal in that condition. It's not right. Wombats are dying for various reasons in very large numbers, which will, I believe, ensure they're, that they are critically endangered by 2030 and possibly on the extinction list as soon as 2030. There is loss of habitat, there is mange, there is roadkill which is escalating every year and then there is the issue of illegal shooting by members of the Australian public for fun on weekends, um, by farmers. For people to understand the urgency of treating wombats with mange, you need to close your eyes and you need to picture yourself with millions and millions of mites underneath your skin, eating you from the inside out. You need to envisage having secondary infections um, occur as a result of this parasite activity within your body. We're not talking outside, we're talking inside so you actually cannot get rid of them. Wombats with mange have very severe secondary infections initially with mange. This then leads to organ failure inside the body due to an elevated white blood cell count. This causes um, liver and kidney failure specifically in wombats with prolonged mange. So while you may see an animal who you think has mange and can be treated, that animal may actually in fact be in the final stages walk, still walking around but with kidney failure, with liver failure, it is in fact dying a very slow death. When we first started working with mange wombats at the sanctuary we used the conventional topical treatment method that is used within Australia for mange wombats. However, with the 9 to 12 months treatment period for a mange wombat to become mange free and remain mange free because this is key in the treatment of eradicating sarcoptic mange. We then collaborated with our sanctuary veterinary scientist and came up with an oral treatment which has reduced the treatment time for our wombats from anything from four to eight weeks and generally with a totally mange free animal three months later. The reason for doing this is we needed to work in a much faster, smarter way for the amount of animals that are coming through from this epidemic. 
Ever since I've met Donna, um, I was so amazed by her human spirit and commitment to animal welfare. It's actually resulted in quite a um, significant award. Donna was awarded the Medal of the um, Order of Australia in the uh, ceremonies last year for her work on, on animal welfare and the um, true commitment that she shows to, to wombats. And that is also translated into all sorts of ingenious and, and pioneering um, inventions here at Sleepy Burrows. So we are really excited to be working with, with Donna and, and a team here at Sleepy Burrows to even um, bring this work to new levels, to actually try and address that um, epidemic of, um, of mange in these um, poor little creatures that um, without our help will probably go extinct. Hey, my name is Yolandi. I am a ambassador at the Sleepy Burrows Sanctuary, which means I'm a volunteer. I volunteer as much time as I can take off work, weekends, holidays, as much as I can, because this place is just absolutely amazing. As far as I know, the biggest wombat sanctuary in the world, um, run by Donna, which is an incredible person. She lives and breathes wombat. She starts at six in the morning, bottles, um, grass cutting. Grass cutting is every single day, two or three tubs of grass. She does medicine, she does caring, she does washing, well, 12, 15 loads a day. Um, everything else that comes with the household, she's got children and a husband that she needs to take care of. Yes. So, you know, not many people have got as many wombats as us. Um, and when it comes to feeding times, we've got a lot of little ones, so obviously the feeding times are quite consistent. And very early in the morning, um, you know, two o'clock in the morning, Don will be up and she'll be poking along, getting all these little ones fed. 